Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the vlog. And for today's video, we're going to talk about one of my favorite species of plants, which is philodendron. So specifically, we're talking about philodendron micans for today. So this one is really special for me. And I also like the trailing and vining plants. So this is one of my go-to plants whenever I go to nurseries. So if you're interested with this type of plants and species and you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're not a new subscriber, well, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for making it through. So without further ado, let's talk about the philomycans. <music> Like you guys see the up close look of it. So basically, native to tropic regions of Mexico and the Caribbean, the philodendron mycan is a stunning philodendron variety that is known for its velvety, heart-shaped leaves and training growth habit. It has become extremely popular as a plant house plant and can be difficult to come across in some regions as a result. But if you are able to get your hands on one, you won't regret it. I swear you won't. This has a velvety um, touch, velvety touch, and philodendron micans looks great in hanging planters or climbing moss poles or trellises. And similar to other philodendron varieties, this is a low maintenance plant, and that's the good part about it. This mycan is considered toxic both cats and dogs. So if you are a fur parent, then maybe you will doubt or second thought of buying this plant. But guess what? You can hang it and put it on the upper level that your cats and dogs won't reach, definitely. This philodendron is very easy to care for and grow indoors as a house plant. It appreciates bright in direct light when draining soil and regular watering so you don't want to overwater your philomycans just because it doesn't like to sit on a wet soil just like other philodendrons. It does produce flowers in the wild. It is extremely rare for them to flower indoors and when they do, the blossoms are fairly insignificant compared to their brilliant foliage. Mycans enjoys bright, medium, and direct light. Avoid prolonged periods of direct sunlight as it can burn their delicate leaves, causing discoloration and crispy edges. So again, I've mentioned that on my previous video. Don't overdo it. Don't let the sunshine or sun rays hit them so hard on the leaves because it will cause the total damage, which is sunburn. The amount of light that your philodendron mycan is exposed to will ultimately influence the color of the leaves. Increased light will cause the leaves to stay red, maroon, or chocolate brown rusted, while lower light will result in leaves that are a deeper green color. So if you want to have a vibrant color on your philodendron mycans, just like this, just put it in the low or medium light or in direct sunlight. Tropical aroid requires an airy, moist, well-training soil and in order to do that, you need some organic materials to provide. So basically, most of the time, I'm using coconut peat, coconut moss, and then coconut husk for chunks if you have available on your face. And then I have orchid barks. I have um, pumice. Sometimes I put pumice instead of perlite or I substitute it with charcoal. So I have this um, chunky or brown charcoal that I always put to avoid fungal problems or infections on the roots of my plants. Fertilizers. So I use warm castings or honestly, I'm using my aquarium fish water. Yes. Because this one is organic and it has rich minerals, organic minerals that our plant needs. So it's 100% organic because it comes from 
the dirt of the fish. So that's what I feed them every once in a while. And of course, to make them look vibrant, greener, or um, bigger. I use the NPK 141414 for my plants. So that is one of my biggest secrets and it's revealed. <laughs> My cans are slightly sensitive when it comes to watering, so they don't want to sit on a wet soil just like any other plants. But this specific plant right here want it a little bit on the drier side. So what I do is I just water my mycans once a week. Since we have a tropical country here in Malaysia, so I just tend to water it like once a week. Or if it's too hot, like dry and hot weather, I tend to water it twice in a week. So this one used to be a bit longer and leggy and I just um, fertilized it yesterday. So just for the sake of this video, I chopped chop my pillow mycans and I will show you guys the cuttings that I made yesterday. So I separated into two, which is the water propagation and the plant or soil propagation. How do I use it? So yeah, we have the soil and the water propagation. So here, I will show you some cuttings of the ones that has a little bit longer stems and the one of the single um, leaves cuttings that I made. So here they are. So first, for the single cuttings that I made, I just cut it just like this. Okay, single node cutting. This is what we call single node cutting. And then this one is the internode cutting. So, okay, this is way more longer than these single cuttings. But I like it this way just because this one is for the soil propagation. So, what I do is tomorrow I will be putting them straight onto the soil. So, I don't need to wait for the roots to grow. I just want to put them straight onto the soil. However, this one, I might need to wait for maybe two weeks time before I repot them onto the soil. Just because this one is an experiment. So I want to show you guys just to make a point which one is growing faster. The one on the water or the one on the soil. But definitely, some mycans make it through when you water propagate them first. So. Again, it's all up to you if you want to observe and you want to water propagate your plants first before you put it onto the water or you want to put them directly onto the soil. But for me, it works both ways. I just do it like this, um, just in case it rots, at least I have the allowance to cut off the rotten stems and then I can still save the part that is nearby the roots or aerial, aerial roots. How do I keep on saying that? Yes, so aerial roots. I'm so sorry guys, I keep on stuttering. This is the struggle whenever I do my videos. So I stutter a lot. So just bear with me on the entire video. So I have a few cuttings here that I did last night. So uh, <laughs> I also included my um, aglonema cuttings right here and I just dump them onto the jar of water. So here are the cuttings of my mycans. Okay, uh, the length of this stem is like two meters or so. So it's really long. It was really long and it's twisting and I just put them over the top of each other just to make it more compact just to make it look lushier and bushier. So that's what I do. So I just cut and then poke it onto the soil again and then cut and then poke it onto the soil over and over again until I achieve the lusher and bushier look of it. So I guess that's it for today for this video about philodendron mycans. And if you're interested to this kind of content and you liked it, please do share, like, and feel free to comment down below. And I want to hear from you guys about your plant journey and all. So again, this has been me, Zamut Sari, and I will see you all on my next video. Have a great day, everyone. Bye!